Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for today so another most popular android 13 base a custom rom by the developer abhinav gupta has been released few days back called as the derfest os derfest os is a pure pixel experience based rom with the addition of some useful customizations along with the maintaining the performance and the stability of the device before proceeding we request you to please do like share subscribe and press the bell icon for our channel to get the notification of contents like the custom rom stock ot updates reviews new amazing mods for your oneplus 9rt we are honestly trying to give you the unbiased and the useful content via our channel so today we'll see how can we flash this custom rom if you are coming from the another custom rom if you are flashing this rom first time then follow the video given in i card we'll compare the performance and the cpu throttling results of this rom with the last reviewed rom called as the rise droid We'll discuss some important customizations. Finally, I have shown what are the bugs and my final verdict. So watch the video till the end. Now, without further ado, let's get started. First, we will see how to flash the ROM if you are coming from the another custom ROM. Here, I am using the Rise Droid on my phone. So first download the full rom zip file place it in the pc inside the c drive and the platform tools folder now enable the developer setting in the phone in the developer setting enable the usb debugging now power up the phone then long press the volume down plus power button to boot your device in a fast boot mode once phone booted to the fast boot mode using the volume keys and the power button select recovery mode phone will boot to this recovery screen you can also use the advanced power menu of your custom rom or you can directly use the adb reboot recovery now in the recovery tab apply update and select apply from the adb now connect phone to the pc now go to the folder where you place the derfest rom file open the same window here using the shift plus right click of your mouse select the open powershell window from the drop down menu now in cmd type adb side load and drag the rom zip file in the cmd to locate its location and hit enter on your keyboard once done flashing starts on the pc with the flashing progress percentage and once done we'll get the x for one x means flashing is finished now on the phone go back to the home screen of recovery using the back arrow key now tap add once select reboot recovery phone will boots to the derf recovery now tap add once and select format data once done tap reboot to the system finally phone boots to the amazing animation of the derf stories after finishing the setup process phone boots to the derf launcher with the lightning sky blue wallpaper Now let's jump to the about phone to check the changes for the new rom. This is the Android 13 based Derfest OS with the old Android 13 clock history. Derfest OS version is the Tango, maintainer of rom is Anurag, Android security patch is of November 2022. Sadly still none of the custom rom has implemented the December security patches. Kernel version is 5.4.191 builded with the latest Clang tool chain 14. Kernel is enforcing. Except the security patches everything is up to date. Now let's check out the performance and we will compare it with the Rise Droid 8.5. You can check the performance testing timeline of the iCard video to check the Rise Droid build results. Initial impression of ROM is amazing. ROM is super smooth, fast, everything is just gliding on the fingertips. This ROM is using the true potential of Snapdragon 888. When check the screen refresh rate, it's fluctuating between 120 Hz to 60 Hz most of the time, but still you can't feel the visible difference in the performance. I force enable the 120 hz in the developer settings still while using some applications like the camera it is going down to the 60 hz when i ran the geekbench test i got the score of 1100 and 3300 respectively for the single core and multi core for rise dot 8.5 build we got 1104 and 3345 so slightly high results we got for the rise dot as compared to the derfest os later we did the hulkan graphics api test here i got the score of 4324 while well, for the rise droid result is 5178 so huge difference is found between the rise droid and the derfest os so definitely rise droid is winner here as compared to the derfest os but still you cannot feel any visible performance difference between the both the roms rom comes with the all the latest open gl and the hulkan graphics drivers now next we do the cpu throttling test to know will this rom able to perform well in the cpu intensity task and at the higher temperatures i ran the test for the 20 threads up to 5 minutes I didn't got any single performance drop in the graph in the whole the test. After 5 minutes when I stopped the test I got the score of 90% while for the Rise Droid we got exactly same results. 
So both the ROM seems very good for the CPU intensive task management and maintaining the device performance at the higher temperatures. Now we will not waste any time to show you what's working because everything I tested like we did in the old ROMs and they are perfectly working. But we will see the camera is it fully working or not. I will show you what's not working or the bugs in the bug section of the video. So watch the video till the end. ROM comes with the basic camera application. So as usual I installed the Google Gcam MGC build. Like all the old custom ROMs here night side portrait mode for the both the front and the back camera is working. Video recording with the stabilization is working fine. Slow motion is still buggy but time lapse is working. Ultra wide camera angle modes are working. Panorama and the photosphere mode both are working. Video recording at the 4K system is still not supported. So like all the old custom ROMs same buggy things are here like slow motion and 4K system is recording. Now we will directly start with the new important features in the ROM. In the main setting of the phone we case the Derf Space Customization Hub. Here all the customizations are categorized in the different tabs like the status bar, QS panel, lock screen etc. Here we will see only important customizations. In the lock screen we case the edge lightning notification indicator for the always on display and is fully working here. In the rise dot it's not working. In the same setting we case the battery bar for the always on display. There are different toggles available here to enable it when the phone is on charging or always show the battery bar. Under the system category we case the customization options here in the user interface style. We case the lots of theming options which will change the overall look of your system panel. You can check them on the screen. I especially like the Sushi Illusion theme which gives the wallpaper based background to the settings panel. Instead of this who gets the bunch of the body or the headline font, system icon packs, I especially like it here, the SAMS icons pack which looks cool. Wi-Fi signal icons are also available here along with the bunch of the icon shapes. Like RiseDroid we also get the fingerprint icon and this animation styles. We get the bunch of the option to choose here, some of them you can check on the screen. Instead of this, all the old customization options are available under the display setting like the live display. Here we get the high brightness mode also. Different color modes are available. I always prefer boosted mode which gives the punchy look to the AMOLED panel. Under the battery, we get some new settings to optimize your device battery to prolong the battery performance. Here we get the toggle to show the battery status for the 24 hours. So we can accurately calculate the device battery life for the one day without using any third party applications like the Accu battery etc. Block sensor is another setting to block the sensor access to the most battery draining applications. We can add any application to block the sensor from the app list. Kill background toggle helps to kill all the background activities when the phone is in ideal no use mode. Silent mode option has the different setting to enable or disable the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data network for the specific timing of the day, especially during the night mode. So this will prolong the battery, we just need to enable the toggle after setting our preferences. In the home setting of launcher, we get the theme icon for the app drawer applications and it's actually theming most of the applications. It looks very gorgeous. So we discussed all the major points, now it's time to show you the bugs or the issues. First bug is the screen flickering while using the phone in AOD mode. It's also flickering if you change the alert slider while phone is on AOD. Under the Dove customization, we get the pulse for the media playback, but it's not working even if you enabled all the toggles for the pulse animation. Under the system, we get the Dove system updater, but as ROM is not officially supported, we didn't getting the OTA support. It's showing the network error. In the home setting of launcher, we get the taskbar for the multitasking. But once enabled, we cannot minimize it by long pressing on the corners of the taskbar, which is very annoying. We have to toggle off the settings in the home settings of the launcher to disable it. ROM is still on the wide one L3, so we can't able to stream Netflix, Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. Except these bugs or the issues, I didn't find any major issue. So ROM is perfectly fine, it's all rounder ROM, but still needs more improvement to stabilize the system and the remove the bugs. RiseDroid seems more mature as compared to this Surface OS. 
so this is all about the new interface tools if you think this video helped you then please do like share subscribe and press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching see you next time take care bye bye